the emotional cloud. Write down this expression, emotional cloud, because this is going to be a topic that is mentioned a lot during our videos. One of these days, when I was approaching the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil, I had left the countryside to go to the city. On this day, we were going there around 10 a.m. When you get near the town and reach a certain point at the highway, you look at Sao Paulo and see that black, dark, grayish cloud over the city. I had company in the car, and that person said, wow, that's impressive. We're going to get into all this pollution, because it's an impressive pollution. Without exaggerating, when you're already there, you can't see that you're enveloped in pollution. But then I commented to the person, look, I've been doing some work regarding the study of the psychological, emotional and spiritual parts. And for this work, I've been taking notes, because this is what happens. In the big cities, like most capitals, you can notice an emotional energy cloud that is very dense, which is the result of hundreds of negative feelings like anxiety, hurt, anger, misuse of sexuality, and jealousy. I could go on naming an endless list of similar items that human beings can produce with their emotional chakras. And exteriorize in the environment. I made that comment because I thought that someone could use the information. When you go to a big city, it's evident that your entire configuration of chakras changes. You will have to work in a new environment, which is an environment where you don't see what's going on, and you don't see the energies, but they are affecting you. You enter a contaminated environment. It is an environment where everything is denser than the energies above, below approximately 500 meters high. In the big centers, especially in the lowest height ranges, the energy density is very high. It gets accumulated, and since we don't let the earth do its job because we plasticize and asphalt everything, it accumulates and reaches unbelievably high heights. It's absurd. That's what I have on record. I could be wrong because there are many variables involved in such analysis. Anyway, we get immersed in this kind of energy. If you go to a natural environment you won't even see anything because there is no such thing as emotional energy thrown into the air and left floating there. The earth takes care of the cleaning, the trees can handle the job as well as the rivers, the ocean and the mountains. There will be wind and everything else. But in the big centers, we produce lots of emotional energy, and we certainly produce spiritual energy as well. When someone brings negative energy into a space, it can cause a ripple effect on those around them. And the way we react to this situation is by feeling all the somatic symptoms caused by this energy content. If the environment is anxiety-inducing, stress may arise. If the atmosphere is competitive, individuals may feel compelled to compete, even if unnecessary. Because energy drives us to what we absorb from the environment. Therefore, whatever energy you have absorbed, added by the intention behind it, 
whether consciously or unconsciously, is the result of the process. It is impossible to avoid it. It's clear-cut that there is always a correlation of forces, and you can't compete with an energy bolus emitted by millions of people who are exteriorizing the same low-level energy. You won't be able to isolate yourself and likely become contaminated. You may understand that better by watching a soccer match. Go to the soccer field on one of those special days. Known as, it's the end of the championship. All the fans are throwing their energy into it. Attempting to maintain complete stability in this chaotic environment is impossible. You'll get contaminated by all that contagious frenzy, and soon enough, you'll start jumping like everyone else. It is crucial to acknowledge the correlation of forces at play and not disregard its impact. If you want peace, you'll have to go somewhere where the energy is of peace in the first place. Finding peace in spaces that are very turbulent and contaminated by what we are, by our unbalanced behavior, is not something we can do. And that is precisely what I was trying to explain. When I looked ahead on the road and saw Sao Paulo, I said, impressive, because all the pollution is both spiritual and emotional energies sent out, and we ultimately don't see any of that. We just pass through the middle of that chaos, and that's it. We can see from far away and up close that we are energy. This last comment has to do with understanding what we put in our lives and into the air, in the place we live, in our homes, and in the environments we frequent. That is something that needs to be crystal clear. I'm aware that sometimes, I stress out opinions that may hurt some people, and there might be complicated reactions. Someone may say, no, I don't accept that. Another one, but I thought it was right. No matter what we think, we all have the right and the freedom to express ourselves and to get things right or wrong. What is imperative to be taken into consideration by all of us is the respect we must have for each other. We show respect by speaking properly and avoiding foul language. Because, otherwise, we'll be thickening this horrible energy that carries out a very dense charge. In the end, the fundamental purpose should be to work with the intent to help each other. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and follow our work. You can find the address of our website and our social networks in the description. We'll meet again in the next video. Será bem-vindo. Nos encontramos no próximo Fatores Espirituais. Would you like to participate in a work of energy giving from afar that is benefiting thousands of people? Click on the link below for more information.